greetings from Just Car People Things. We're going to go through a quick build on our 1947 Bantam trailer. We uh, bought this trailer off Craigslist for about $900. It was uh, sound and rust free, but it was a little bit of a struggle to get home. The tires were original and didn't hold air. So we bolted it uh, or strapped it down to a U-Haul trailer. And you can see here that's the perfect size to fit on a dolly, a uh, tow dolly for a front wheel drive car. We may have uh, not mentioned we were attaching a trailer to a tow dolly, but we certainly uh, used it to get it home without too much issue. And then started our teardown and build process. And while uh, cosmetically in pretty good shape, physically in pretty good shape, everything was original to the late 1940s. So uh, pulled all the electrical off of it, uh, did new paint and a whole bunch of other stuff. So uh, lots of fun on this project, uh, just a ton of stuff. So there's our original electrical that uh, had wire nuts in it, <laughs> like household electrical. We even pulled the axle off uh, and re-axled it. Uh, this is the original uh, tire a wheel set and axle um, primarily off a of Jeep CJ2. Uh, so this is worth a chuckle. Uh, really went to town trying to remove uh, the tire on the uh, right side of the trailer and the passenger side of the trailer and uh, struggled and struggled and struggled uh, with it a little bit but uh, turns out at the end of the day uh, we were uh, tightening the bolts and not loosening them. These, these, uh, these axles actually have reverse threads on uh, that side of the <laughs> that side of the trailer, so struggled for probably two hours. Uh, went through an electric impact, went through uh, uh, my regular air impact, and overgassed the air impact. All uh, even jumped on a big, geez, probably three foot long breaker bar with a big metal bar on the end of that. Couldn't break anything loose. Couldn't break anything off. Actually contemplated cutting uh, the lug nuts off at one point, and then. Uh, Gave up, and later that uh, that day, that evening, I talked to my grandpa on the phone, who has a CJ5 at the head, at the time, had a CJ5, and he said, uh, "Hey, you know, sometimes those are reverse threads." And uh, I promptly went back out into the garage, and uh, after much, much swearing, uh, just literally put the gun on them, uh, impact gun, half inch Dewalt electric impact on them, much bigger than the one that's in this photo. Uh, this is the adult size one, and uh, just buzzed it right off. So uh, that was a little bit of a struggle. Uh, but it ended up working out just fine. The axle seals and everything internally was probably spent and um, The tires were just totally shot. I don't know if you can really see it in this photo, but uh, the damage had kind of been done uh, to, to those tires after 40 or 50 or 70 years uh, that, that they needed to go so in fact the axle seals were dripping um, a little bit of grease so they can be reliable. They can easily be rebuilt. You can actually get a lot of the parts uh, parts for these online and uh, be able to, to actually build almost an entire one of these trailers from scratch. The military just built a zillion of them, uh, probably several hundred thousand of them during uh, World War II all the way through the 60s and the 70s. And these were actually uh, frequently in military service uh, all over the world and until probably the 90s. So. Finding them surplus has gotten a little bit harder uh, over the years, but finding them in the used market uh, has definitely been doable, and the parts are just all over the place. So that was my uh, my great struggle. Thankfully, it didn't involve too much pain and suffering. And when we went to, to uh, clean the trailer up, there was a little bit of surface rust on the underside, and the easiest way to do that, you can see here, was just to actually flip the trailer right on its end. And you can see the axle seal leaking there on the left. And... Uh, just ended up unbolting everything uh, all together. And there's the pile of, of parts there on the ground of all the stuff we, we sort of tore off the trailer. Uh, we'd also bedlinered uh, the first couple coats of spray bedliner on the interior of the trailer. Uh, it was just gray paint and I was kind of worried about it getting beat up a little bit. So that was a, an easy part of the process. It's a, an easy to use product. And we'll show you the underside here. This is uh, what it looked like underneath. You can see a little bit of the surface rust. There's no perforation anywhere, but um, particularly under the fenders and, and kind of along those rails, these have like a box ladder frame. Uh, we wanted to make sure to get in there and, and really uh, go to town with like a wire brush, remove uh, mechanically most of that. Uh, and while we had it stood on its head, we uh, backed all the cars out of the garage, uh, basically turned it into a little bit of a spray booth and uh, coated the underside down in, in a good rusty metal primer. Um, to really make sure that it wouldn't uh, wouldn't be further degraded or damaged. Corrosion is the enemy on these uh, these older trailers, uh, especially when you're getting up into that 70, 80, 90 year range. Uh, one thing to note about this photo that's kind of interesting is uh, these uh, trailers actually have uh, grease fittings on the joints uh, where the leaf springs are mated to the trailer. Uh, it helps with uh, kind of the cushioning of those and lets them flex a little bit easier. But uh, as you can see, the, the rusty metal primer is going on. 
<clears throat> and covering, we're about halfway down the trailer here, covering the uh, the parts uh, you know on the underside that had surface rusted, and we made sure to put several coats and really get into these uh, fender liners on the left there. You can see uh, we're, we're in pretty rough shape. So uh, lots of parts uh, to clean up, but uh, really pretty straightforward. We also uh, took this time to measure. You can see the uh, the little bump there in the middle of the leaf springs. That's going to be your center for when you order a new axle. Uh, and of course, we spec an axle to match our truck. So you need those width between the leaf springs and then an overall width uh, between the hub faces. And that's kind of how that worked. So once we got it down off the uh, off the uh, <laughs> on its on its head here, we uh, ended up primering and painting it. We just did a spray pi primer on the body. Um, we went through on the underside and coated it with uh, with black paint and then undercoat on top of that uh, just to really add uh, the ability for some rust prevention. Uh, this was a, a, an interesting part of the process. Um, we actually ordered uh, some paint that matched our Lexus. So you, you can go online and for about $20, $15 to $20 a spray can, you can actually order uh, paint that matches your, your vehicle uh, right down to the color code. So. We ordered four or five cans of, uh, of that on a spray basis and came back through and taped off what we, what we had just bedlinered and uh, coated most of the, uh, the trailer's body in the same um, <clears throat> red that's on our GX460. So uh, the Merlot Mica is a, is a fun color. Didn't know exactly how it would turn out. Um, it's a pretty close match. I actually found out it kind of ended up being a little bit darker in the end. but. It, it looks very close, and of course, being on the same wheel set and the axle we spec and everything else, it, it looks pretty good. So, uh, this was a, a fun part of the process. Spent a lot of time. Um, you know, you can make spray paint look good. It just requires uh, wearing a respirator and, and a lot, a lot of prep, prep work. So, we did end up putting a, a little bit of a clear coat over this as well, just to give it a little bit of extra protection. Uh, we we ordered a two-part automotive clear. Uh, that really is uh, specialized for, for kind of a hardness and, and giving spray paint some further durability. As an aside, I just want to mention one of our intents here was to, to put our roof tent uh, on the trailer. And we had been keeping our roof tent up on top of, uh, on top of our truck, uh, up, you know, six plus feet in the air. And it's super cool to have your own tree fort. Here you go in the rain. What a great sound that is. Uh, but really wanted to put it on the trailer. So uh, finish the process. New axle, we ordered this axle, uh, put bearing, made sure it had bearing buddies. There's us doing some wiring work to the trailer and bolting the axle on. And of course now finally with uh, sort of everything finalized, uh, this was our first picture where we went for a test drive with it to make sure that uh, the axle wasn't gonna fall off it uh, through our neighborhood. So neat process, neat part of, uh, part of the build to be able to see it all come together, to see the matching Lexus wheels on it. And uh, then from there we went to, to sort of managing our roof tent. So up until um, uh, this point, we had actually stored our roof tent on this Harken lift system, H-A-R-K-E-N. These are the same guys that make uh, sailboat lifts. Uh, it's like a f uh, five or eight to one. You pull down an inch or two here, that'll only go maybe an eighth of an inch or a fifth of an inch, uh, but it does allow you to haul that all the way up onto the ceiling and, and get a, way, a place to set a trailer up in above you and then drop it onto your vehicle. So the thought process here was we'd add these racks, uh, which were bolt-on, compliments of our friend at the friends at the Compact Camping Store, and eventually uh, be able to drop with that Harkin winch system the uh, trailer, uh, the roof tent onto the trailer. And that's where you get this net result. Uh, and uh, that, that allows us to uh, lower that uh, tent down there directly onto the rails using that Harkin winch system. Uh, right on there and that's a, a nice easy way to do it. it lets you get this cool shot of us taking it at our first outing out to uh, the Silver Lake Sand Dunes in the west side of Michigan to out, uh, go uh, off-road with the uh, the GX and uh, there it is all set up for the first time. It was a really uh, satisfying moment to be able to put it together and drop it off and just go straight out to the sand dunes to then uh, promptly uh, do something very foolish in our friend's T-Rex which was to jump it uh, over the very top of one of the dunes. Uh, yeah. Ouch, felt that the next day, I, I can assure you. Uh, that being said, here's a, a quick walk around of what the trailer looks like uh, today after, geez, probably a, a 4,000, 5,000 miles of travel. Uh, we keep the bearings greased, uh, we keep it clean, we just did a wash video, uh, we'll drop that, uh, a link to that here in the video for you, but uh, it it's turned out really cool. I uh, had a few issues here and there, um, but overall, what a great thing to be able to just bolt onto the uh, back of your truck, uh, your GX right there. And honestly, be out the door and on your way to camp within, um, geez, probably an hour or so. 
Uh, in fact, I've even loaned it out to, uh, to family and friends because uh, it's just so easy to use uh, and had them take it up north, uh, including our friend here at the end of the video with the Gladiator. So uh, please feel free to, uh, to like and subscribe. Uh, always happy to answer questions here at Just Car People Things, and I uh, hope you guys have a great day.